After leaving Lucky Fish on the hard stand in Grenada in episode 34, we returned to Mongolia. We stopped over in England to visit Rory and his Tiki 21 cooking fat and met with James Warham and Hana Kaboon for the first time. I wanted to say thank you to them for designing such a capable catamaran at a price that is affordable to many. We shared that meeting in episodes 35 and 36. Back in Mongolia, my sabbatical had ended and it was back to work. Zaya's friends made us welcome home cupcakes. I dressed up in high-vis clothing and a hard hat, trying to improve Mongolian mining practices, and found myself on Mongolian national television. <laughs> then I got upset with a tomato. So for several years now we've been able to enjoy cherry tomatoes. Uh, most of the other brands of salad tomato have been genetically modified and uh, lost their flavour. Now uh, just witness the first of the Chinese genetically modified cherry tomato, a thick skin flavourless variety that's now leaked into the marketplace. Nothing. Not an ounce of flavour. It's like eating, um, it's like drinking a glass of water, chewy glass of water. I don't know what they've done to it. It's just plain wrong. I mean, if you're going to fiddle with genes, you've got the intelligence and the technology and the backing behind you to recognise a good product from a bad one. They must taste this stuff and someone must give it the thumbs up and release it to market. I mean, really? What are the drivers in this whole mechanism? There will be a woman as uh, the presidential nominee. Zaya made some repairs to the spare room. We turned it into a studio. I had another birthday. No, you're so smart. How did you know that? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> now I've got two <laughs> shit heads. <laughs> Where is it? Here, look. look at that. Now that is, I love that headset, but finally it's dying. Is it old as you are? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Mm. Well, listen to me, Mum. I hope for a start. Okay, let's get it plugged in because she's waiting. Yeah. <laughs> and we began editing the story of the Atlantic crossing. <laughs> <laughs> then I got sent to Beijing. Luckily, Zaya could join me. I think um, you can never underestimate the skills of these uh, Chinese taxi drivers. Just for fellows able to drive in this traffic and also uh, watch television at the same time. It's with GPS one side, television the other. Hang on, what's that other noise? This is seriously not in existence. <laughs> what can I say? Welcome to the new world. We return to the hotel. <laughs> Too new making it old, yeah. So this is the good stuff, right? Yeah. Can you tell the difference? Just going down to talk to um, Chinese police about uh, more counterfeit money. Second time I've been burned in Beijing. This time from a ATM inside the Novotel and uh, Novotel Hotel. And uh, I won't record whilst I'm doing this. 
Can you tell the difference? Well, I can I feel the difference, and that's the bad stuff. Thicker, yeah. I know the paper's not quite the same quality, is it? Here's your problems. The taxis are smart. They they know the counterfeit. <laughs> the um, hotel won't take the counterfeit back. Yeah. The supermarket, strangely, doesn't have a hundred won checker. So they seem to take the. Aren't you there to show it to? People. No, they, we get apprehended by the Beijing police. They're yeah. going to look through our phone and find this and think yeah. we're probably Gosh. part of some money laundering ring. Yeah, delete it, honey. We're going to get in trouble. <laughs> I don't think so. We're trying to help them. We made the police report, and hopefully, our complaint will go in the file with many others, and eventually, they'll do something. Pardon me? Yeah, they look great. Shitty day outside, Beijing, lovely sunny day, 31 degrees, look at that sky, lovely blue, mixed with a little bit of coal dust and a lot of ash, and goodness knows what else, insane, but they're on top of it. Two of them no good, eh? That's alright, okay. Uh, confirm. 2,400. Out of service. Please take away warrant and contact the bank staffs. Okay, get our money back then. With our money. <laughs> Unbelievable. On return to Mongolia, winter had arrived all too soon. But with it came New Year's parties. They don't celebrate Christmas much, but Western New Year is a big deal. Well, hi everyone, we're here in Ulaanbaatar. <laughs> it's uh, January the 10th. Yeah. We've just hit 100 subscribers and we're very happy. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, this is the other side of the coin. We've spent the last six months here in UB uh, getting our uh, website up and running and I guess pushing out a few YouTube videos trying to share our experience um, and the latest is that uh, Zaya is going to complete her MBA here until April and then come and join the boat in Cuba around about middle of April middle of April and I'm going to sail the boat from Grenada to Cuba and meet her there and then today we went to the US Embassy and made our visa application to sail the um, Intracoastal Waterway <coughs> in the US probably for around about six months which we're really excited about 
and uh, wasn't part of the plan but the thing with boats is you just follow the follow the opportunities as they come along and there's the uh, the hui in uh, Florida for all the warums that want to attend this year and uh, we're one that wants to go so we're going to start in Fort Myers and head up maybe as far as New York through uh, the summertime and then head back down into the Caribbean later in the year maybe <laughs> we don't know it's too far ahead to plan oh well, that was all one take that's good because <laughs> my hands are freezing um cold out here <laughs> yeah I know, it must be minus 20 minus 30 at the moment uh resignation for my job it's uh, not going smoothly it's the second time i've resigned in the space of just over a year uh, it's about uh minus 20 here in ulaanbaatar I must be getting used to it because I haven't got my scarf pulled up over my face for the first time in a couple of months. Next week we're expecting minus 50. I haven't experienced, just got to watch the intersection here, I haven't experienced minus 50 Celsius in five and a half years here so it's a little bit of a first. I've got a three kilometre walk home and uh, I'm pretty excited to say that um, just three days ago I handed in my notice through no fault of Mongolia it's been a fantastic experience but there's so much more in the world to see and so little time and that I guess is the pressing equation when do you cut and run I've got a wonderful job here I work with wonderful people I could go on doing this forever and be perfectly happy and content but how much is enough? And I think that's the question that we're all faced with, you know. That's probably the one thing that stops us from realising when to go. And really there's no time that's the right time. That's what I've come to learn anyway. It's a bit like having children. If the wife says she's pregnant, it's always going to be a problem. <laughs> but there is no time that's the right time to have a baby. And there's no time that's the right time to throw in your job and push on. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, wonderful memories in Mong. Going to miss the place, going to miss the wonderful people. I'm sure I'll be back. But in the meantime, farewell. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things I really care about the office here. I don't want to leave everybody just hanging. and we need to find a replacement so we've got a few little issues to sort out we're supposed to be jumping on a plane in 10 days and going to Grenada, we'll see uh, nothing's ever simple but comes a time in your life when uh, it's important you do the things that you really believe in and uh, right now we're very lucky to be both focused on one thing too heavy that was <laughs> My hands are freezing, All darling. Right. So we're yeah, we're gonna go do some shopping, food shopping. <laughs> oh yeah, we are. We're about to do some food shopping before getting back to the apartment where things are a good deal warmer. All right, bye All for right. now. See you.
the back there now. Hey, bounce it. So tell them, tell them all. Tell the guys all. Hold tight. Uh, Grenada, where did we leave? Clark's Court Bay Marina and we're motoring out straight into 15 knot trade wind down the channel and then we'll be able to turn to our west and head around the south end of the island shortly. It's uh, very exciting. Everything's working tickety-boo, the engines are running fine and uh, we've got three things we want to test on this little trip. Firstly, the, uh, we want to keep an eye on the lashings, the new lashings, make sure they stand up to it. We'll have a look at those when we anchor the night, Grand Ands. And uh, we want to check the Watt and C. We haven't put it in the water yet, but we want to test, give it a little trial and make sure it's putting out the amps. We'll do that when we get sail up very shortly. What island behind you? It's Calvany Island. That's a uh, playground for the rich and famous. Justin Bieber had his birthday there last year or the year before. It used to be owned by the Mafia apparently. I don't know who owns it now. And the third thing we want to test is the water maker. We haven't had a chance to test it yet. Uh, where we splashed the boat at uh, Clark's Court there, there's a rum distillery at the end of the creek and it makes um, a sort of a discharge into the water which would clog up our filters. So we haven't had a chance to recommission the water maker yet, so I'm pretty anxious to see that the pickling we did last year was uh, successful and everything's working fine. We will do that tonight uh, when we're on anchor at uh, the crystal clear waters at Grand Ands. This was April 2017. The work on the hard stand had taken two months longer than expected and Zaya flew direct to Grenada to join me. Apart from the boat work, I'd made the SLV and Dallos videos and began recording the lashing video, Bondage on the High Seas, and the hydro generator video, Free Energy. This footage is mostly unpublished material from that 1000 mile sea trial. Helmsman's just lost her concentration and jibed the jib. Now you're going to jibe it back again. Nice one. Yeah, so all in all pretty good. We're going to go around the corner to Grand Anne's Beach and drop the anchor, hopefully before sunset. We started over here. Yes. Park's Court. Park's Court and we're going on right on. Yes. Yes, you can see where we tacked up mm -hmm. last year. Last year we were looking here. Beating into it, yeah. There's a whole island and now we're going to go around the point. Pretty much backtrack. Instead of going into Port Louis, we're going to stop at Grand Anne's, which is somewhere here, I think. Yeah. Okay, it shouldn't be long. Shouldn't be long. Oh, look at that. We yeah. must have got... Barracuda Waypoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we bought something up here. <laughs> and look at the hairy sailing after we put the barracuda. <laughs> the root goes all funny. Probably <laughs> gutting the barracuda. <laughs> uh. We found a problem with the water maker and dropped into Port Louis to pick up some more water. Until we see land next, maybe Puerto Rico is probably what we'll see first. How many miles? 480 miles. Ooh, nice breeze. We got the seat today. <laughs> So when we left 
Clark's Court Bay uh, for Grand Dan's Beach. We anchored off the beach just after dark. It wasn't ideal, but a fellow who was already anchored there was very kind and uh, pointed out a good spot to drop the pick, and we got it first time. So had a comfortable night there, and then in the morning it was time to uh, recommission the water maker. We finally had the boat sitting in some crystal clear water, and. Uh, the recommissioning was going really well, um, up until the point when the pressure gauge on the control panel failed. Uh, it looked like it had some sort of heart malfunction inside the gauge where the water that was passing by was able to mix with the glycerine in the gauge. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. A little bit of glycerine started to leak out of the gauge, run down the face and uh, you could see a cloudy mixture of water and oil rising up from the bottom of the, the gauge. So uh, all our plans to use the water maker were suddenly scuttled. So what is it, day two? Well, how far did we go on the first day after leaving Grenada? 176 miles. Pretty good. A bit over, yeah. That includes leaving the dock and getting out of the lee of the land and all that. So this next run, if it holds, could be even better. We'll see if the wind holds. But the sailing conditions today are perfect. We left Grenada at 2.30 in the afternoon on Friday 28th of April and motored for a few hours whilst we left the harbour and got ourselves sorted out then hoisted jib, foresail and main, full sails, had a nice late afternoon sail. Just before evening the wind picked up and we put a reef in both the main and the foresail and left that up until about 3.30 in the morning. The wind increased steadily during the night, sat between 20 and 25 knots. Seas were pretty confused until we got around about 140 miles out from Grenada and out of the interference from the Windward Islands, St Lucie and St Vincent, Martinique. Now the seas have become quite regular. Sailing's absolutely perfect. We're on a broad reach, apparent wind's actually right on our beam, so we're on a tight reach. Boats averaging probably seven, seven and a half knots. What's the reason you pulled down the foresail? What's the reason we pulled down the foresail at 3.30? <laughs> well, it's funny because I was actually very relaxed on the boat. We were fairly hammering it. It was like racing. <laughs> the boat was being pushed and it was a lot of fun and she felt very strong and comfortable, although it was bouncy every now and again we get hit by something big and uh, Zaya was off watch trying to sleep and she didn't like the bouncing and the, the occasional thumps and plus you got a yeah you got a um, a dousing of water at some point so I succumbed to the crew and pulled down the foresail which was fine it just made the boat it dropped our speed from where we were doing 7 to 9 and we ended up doing 6 to 7 without the foresail so we were still doing pretty well. Uh, but that went up again in the morning when the wind dropped to between 15 and 20 which is where it's sitting right now. I won't fall over boys. <laughs> Holding onto my shorts probably won't help. You might only end up with the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your plan today? What's your strategy? Strategy today is to stay on course, to try and stay above the ley line, which we are, more or less. Uh, keep the boat moving at better than seven knots. Try and average 170 miles over the next two days and reach the entrance to Mona Pass oh, at round dawn or early morning Monday. So we have 
daylight to go through the passage between Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. And I've just noticed some really cloudy blue water over there. What is that? Where? Next week, we race to make it through Mona Pass, sail straight into a thunderstorm, find a stowaway on board, and discover the beautiful Bahamas.